Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, we're going to be taking a look at what I consider to be a true modern dissipator. Now, for those of you who probably don't know what a dissipator is, originally it was based off of the Colt 60 something because Colt didn't bother to keep it around and the people using it didn't find it to be overly reliable. But the original concept was essentially the shortest barrel possible while still utilizing a rifle length gas system. I believe Colt originally designed it with a 15 inch barrel and a rifle length gas system. What we have here, this is a CAC 16 inch barrel with a rifle length gas system. So that gas block is sitting right here with only about two inches of dwell time or so. Now the name Dissipator has been used in different ways by different companies. I believe Anderson has one, Bushmaster had one, Palmetto State Armory has one. However, some of those utilize what looks like a rifle length gas system, but the gas system inside is either a mid or a carbine instead of a true rifle length system. Because of course, tuning a rifle length system with a shorter barrel is a little bit tricky. You usually have to really, really open up the gas port size, which we'll get into in just a minute, to get it to run. Usually you'll see it with a very retro aesthetic because I believe they were originally designed in the late 60s, somewhere around there. So you'll see them with the clamshell handguards, the front sight blocks, and I'm really just not into that sort of design. Now, when it comes to the aesthetic of those sort of builds, I actually like them quite a bit. I think they look really nice in photos. However, when it comes to actually mounting things where you want them on your handguards, things do get a little bit tricky. As far as front sight blocks go, I don't have any problem with them from a function standpoint. The only things that I don't like about them are, of course, the size, weight, handguard selection, and modern optic occlusion. So, of course, for my quote-unquote modern dissipator, we still have a 16-inch barrel rifle length gas system, no front sight block. We actually have an adjustable gas block on here, which we'll talk about in just a minute, and a 15-inch seven-sided M-lock rail for the more modern purpose. Now, full disclosure on the CAC barrel is that while I did pay my own money for it, I am a dealer for CAC and I've done some videos on some of their products in the past. So keep in mind that there is a relationship there. Now, getting into the barrel basics, which is going to be the most important part of this build. It is, of course, 16 inches long with a rifle length gas system. This one is chambered in 5.56 NATO, one in seven twist, finished in a black nitride, Material is the 4150 chrome molly vanadium steel, which is perfectly fine. Now this barrel profile is kind of a custom profile. It's essentially a middleweight. You have a single taper down to a 0.750 section, straight out to a small gas block shoulder, and then 0.750 basically straight out to the end of the barrel. It is of course dimpled, which is nice from the factory. Weight comes in right at 30 ounces, which is basically on par with a 16 inch government profile barrel. Now with a rifle length gas system on a 16 inch barrel, one of the problems is going to be managing your dwell time versus your gas port size. So dwell time is essentially how long you have pressure at the gas port. Remember, you're only gonna have pressure there after the bullet has passed, but has not yet left the barrel. With a 16 inch barrel and a rifle length gas system, that's only about two inches, which is very short. So to compensate for the short dwell time, you have to have a larger gas port size to keep the amount of pressure you need to actually run the DI system. Now the gas port size on this barrel is the largest I have pin gauged to date, coming in at a 0.117. Now that is a absurdly large gas port size, but that is just one of the things you gotta do if you want this thing to actually cycle. Now talking about how it feels stock using carbine buffers and springs, it's pretty basic. It feels like a medium gassed 16 inch mid system. You really don't feel the benefit of having a rifle length gas with this barrel unless you can tune it. Again, with that large gas port size, just using carbine buffers and springs, it feels mediocre, not bad, not great, just right down the middle, like a 0.076 16 inch mid, which is of course the frame spec. So it's not bad by any means, but there's no reason to go with a 16 inch rifle length system and not get any sort of benefit in terms of the recoil impulse. However, it's probably tuned for rifle length buffers and springs with a little bit of headroom in there as well. Now, when you throw a suppressor in the mix, because again, it has that huge gas port size, even with the rifle length system, it's not really helping you out. It is maybe like one or 2% better, but it's still gassy, it's still punchy. So unless you're using a flow through can, 
you're definitely going to need an adjustable gas block or some way to mitigate the gas flow. However, once you throw in an adjustable gas block, you can throw all those problems out the window. This gun, when tuned properly with, in this case, a Aero Precision adjustable gas block, which is just a cheap gas block I had laying around. I believe I had this from some customer's build or something like that. Anyways, wow. with just this cheap adjustable gas block, you can absolutely make this one of the softest shooting guns that I have ever had the pleasure of shooting. And that is both for suppressed shooting and unsuppressed shooting. I tune this all the way down to eject full power ammo at about 330 with a suppressor, and then when unsuppressed, open it up a little bit, and you still have one of the softest shooting AR-15s you can possibly make. Now, if I were to compare a 16-inch rifle length gas system that's tuned versus a 16-inch mid-length gun that is also tuned, you still have to give a very slight edge to the rifle length system. For instance, if the best possibly tuned 16-inch mid-length gun is shooting at about a 95 out of 100, the rifle length gun can probably push that up to like 97 or 98 out of 100 in terms of recoil impulse, how it actually feels to shoot. They're very close, however, having that little bit longer of a rifle length system is going to delay the action even more. And again, keep in mind that DI AR-15s are incredibly soft shooting to begin with, and this 16-inch rifle length setup, when tuned, is absolutely fantastic. So again, with that tuned rifle length system, we're approaching a mind-blowing level of performance. I mean, the gun literally doesn't move when you're shooting, which is fantastic, but with the cheap CAC barrel, are we getting good accuracy out of it? And we definitely are. Now, starting out with just some ball ammunition and uh, mixed grain weight ball ammunition at that, I tried to find five of the same rounds in an ammo tote that I had that had probably four or five different brands rolling around in it. So you can kind of just ignore the accuracy that I got with the ball ammo, the first five shot group because it might have been two or three different manufacturers in that five round group. Now, moving on to the three match loads that I had the opportunity to put through the barrel, starting off with 69 grain ADI match, which is a Sierra Match King bullet. We got five shots touching, perfect group right at one MOA. Moving on to 73 grain ELDM from Hornady, we got five rounds in the same hole. Then our last group, which was 77 grain Callaway Ballistics, shout out to those guys for providing the ammunition. That was a, a good group, but not quite as fantastic as the other two. Either way, it shot three back to back to back groups right at one to one and a half MOA with match ammunition. And that makes me very happy. So this CAC barrel, when tuned, shoots phenomenally also has very good accuracy as well, at least with the loads that I tested on that day. And did I mention that the barrels are pretty cheap, coming in at just a little bit over a hundred bucks. Now, again, you'll probably want to factor in the cost of an adjustable gas block as well. Even with that factored in, it's still not an expensive barrel. And for the performance you're getting out of it, it might be unbeatable at that level. Again, the accuracy I got out of it was fantastic and easily one of the best shooting, if not the best shooting AR I've ever had the pleasure of shooting. So at the end of the day, I am a huge fan of these barrels set up with an adjustable gas block. I think you can get near peak AR performance with a setup like that, whether suppressed or unsuppressed, so much so that I believe I will be using these barrels in my Mark II builds, which is my 16 inch basic upper on my Focus Shooting LLC, uh, my website. I think we are gonna swap those over to the CAC 16 inch rifle length barrels with an adjustable gas block. Price might fluctuate a little bit, but I think the design works so well that I'd be happy to include it in my own personal builds. Now, a little update on Focus Shooting LLC. I'm trying to wind things down for the end of 2023. Basically, in December, I want to basically do nothing to spend more time with family and a few other things that I need to get taken care of, and then we'll hit it hard in 2024. And since I'm trying to wind everything down, everything that's on there currently is going to be placed on a very steep discount. So if you are interested in anything on the website, go ahead and check that out because there's not that much left. And again, anything that is on there, I do expect to sell quite quickly. But with all of that out of the way, guys, let me know what you guys think of the modern dissipator rifle and the barrel from CAC. Again, I think the raw performance is very good 
the dollar for dollar performance out of it is fantastic because again these are not very expensive barrels and again what i was able to get out of it was very good so let me know what you guys think of all this in the comments down below and with all that out of the way guys thank you once again for watching i hope you all enjoyed i will see you in the next one god bless